heat. <laughs> Going live, has all lots of fun. Right then, good morning. It's uh, Jude Lennon here, storyteller, Little Lamb Tales with Lammy. It's lovely to see you this morning. I hope you are feeling well. It's a bit cloudy today, so hopefully these stories will bring a little bit of sunshine into your morning. Right then, we've got all kinds of lovely stories in the story bag this morning, but obviously, as you know, Lammy and I always like to start with a song. If you've seen us before, then you can join in. And if you haven't seen us before, don't worry. It's so easy. Even the grown-ups, the grannies, the aunts, the uncles, everyone can join in with our song. It goes like this. Hello everyone, how are you? Hello everyone, how are you? Hello everyone, how are you? How are you today? If you feel okay, give us a wave. If you're feeling pretty good, Show us your thumbs, show you who's Lammy. If you're feeling ready for stories, give us a great big smile. Fantastic. Now then, your grown-ups might have seen, and you might have seen it on the news, that in Clondidno, which is a lovely town in Wales, some goats have come down from the mountains and the hills and have been roaming around the streets and having a really lovely time. So, one of the stories in the sack this morning is about some goats. I thought that would be a nice way to celebrate a lovely new story. So let's see if we can get those story going first. Aha! Uh -huh. And here it is. So, I wonder if you can guess what it is. A story about some goats. Mm, there's three of them. They're different sizes and they want to cross a bridge. That's right, we're doing the three Billy Goats Gruff. Now I love doing this story because there's lots and lots of actions, there's lots of joining in, and it's also a really, really good story. Lammy likes this as well because goats are a little bit like sheep. Here we go. Now remember, if you've seen me telling my stories before, you know that some stories we start in the same way. It's one of those. So if you can remember how we do that, join in. Here we go. You ready? Long, 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 all together now, long ago, far away from here on some lovely grassy hills and mountains, there were three billy goats, a big billy goat gruff, a middle sized billy goat gruff and a little billy goat gruff. And every day they would stand on the mountainside and they would nibble the grass. Can you nibble the grass? Mmm, it was delicious. One day the little Billy Goat Gruff looked out across the valley. Over on the other side of the river, there was another mountain. Oh, the grass looked green and fresh and really, really tasty. I'm going to go there, he said. And so he set off. Let's go down the hill. Are you ready with your hooves? He went down the hill until he came to the bridge that crossed the river. And so he set off across the bridge. Are you ready? Now remember this is the little goat so we only do little trip traps. Let's go. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap, trip trap. Halfway across the bridge out jumped a troll onto the bridge and said who's that trip trapping across my bridge? It's me, said little Billy Goat Gruff. I'm going to cross the bridge and eat the grass on the other side. Oh no you're not, said the troll. I'm going to eat you. Oh, you don't want to eat me, said the little billy goat gruff. I'm not very tasty. Why don't you wait for one of my brothers? The troll thought, let's think. Hmm. He thought again. Hmm. All right, he said, you can pass the bridge to the other side. And so the little billy goat gruff set off little who's remember, trip, trap, trip. Trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, all the way across the bridge to the other side. And he started to eat the delicious green grass. Should we eat the grass? Mmm, it was really tasty. Back on the other side of the river, the middle sized Billy Goat Gruff looked out and saw his brother eating the tasty green, yummy grass. I'm going to go as well, he said. And so he set off down to the bridge. Let's go. He went down the mountain. 
until he got to the bridge. Now this is the middle sized Billy Goat Gruff, so we need middle sized hooves everybody. Are you ready? Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. If you know what the troll says, join in. Who's that trip trapping across my bridge, said the troll, jumping onto the bridge in front of the goat. It's me, middle sized Billy Goat Gruff. I'm going to cross your bridge and join my brother and eat the tasty grass. Oh no, you're not said the troll. I'm going to eat you. Oh, you don't want to eat me. I'm not very tasty. Wait for my big brother. He's much bigger than me. He'd be much tastier. Hmm. The troll thought. Let's think. Hmm. And again. Hmm. All right, he said. You can cross the bridge as well. And so, the middle-sized Billy Goat Gruff crossed the bridge. Middle-sized twos, remember? Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. Over the bridge where he joined his little brother and they ate the, the tasty grass. Let's nibble it. Back on this side of the bridge, the big Billy Goat Gruff looked out across. Hmm, my brother seemed to be having a lovely time eating that lovely, delicious grass. I think I will go and join them. So he made his way down the mountain. Let's go. And he started to cross the bridge. Now this is the big Billy Goat Gruff. We need big hooves. You ready? Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. Halfway across the bridge, out jumps the troll. What's he say everybody? Who's that trip trapping across my bridge? It's me. Big Billy Goat Gruff, I'm crossing this bridge to join my brothers. Oh no, you're not, said the troll. I'm going to eat you. Oh, I don't think so, said the Big Billy Goat Gruff. He lowered his horns, you lowered your horns. He pulled the ground with his hoof and he ran as fast as he could and he pushed the troll off the bridge into the river and he floated away and was never seen again. The big billy goat gruff crossed the bridge. Big hooves, remember? Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. And he joined his brothers where they nibbled the grass. And guess what, everybody? They lived happily ever after. Give yourselves a clap. Fantastic. So we thought that would be a great story to start with today because of the goats having such a lovely time in Clindidno. I bet they're eating everybody's front grass, which will be quite nice. It means you don't have to worry about mowing it. Right then, Lammy, we enjoyed that story, didn't we? That's right. Shall we see what else is in the bag today? OK, let's see. Oh, what have we got in here? Oh, oh, right. I love telling this story. My friend Caroline showed me a book she had once, and it's um, written in Polish book had been translated into English and it's a very old story from the 1960s and it's called The Mitten and it's so much fun. It's very silly, it doesn't make any sense but it's just so much fun and there's lots of actions for this as well. So here we go. This is called The Mitten. You know how it begins, are you ready? Long, 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 long. All together now, long ago, far away from here, in a Polish forest in the middle of winter, oh, it was cold and snowy. And there was a little hut. And in that wooden hut lived a little boy, his mum and his grandma. And his grandma loved to knit. Let's knit. She was always knitting. She knitted scarves. She knitted hats. And she knitted mittens to keep everybody's hands warm and every year she would give everybody a new set of mittens. The little boy loved his mittens, they were super warm and super cosy. It was the day before they were going to have a special meal all together and so he had to go out and get some firewood from the woods. Wrap up warm, said his mum, it's very cold. So he put on his coat, can you put on your coat? He fastened it up he put on his scarf that Grandma had knitted him. He put on his woolly hat that Grandma had knitted him. He put on his boots. Can you get your wellies on? And he put on his lovely, cosy, warm mittens. And he was ready. He set off through the woods. Are we ready? He walked and walked and walked and walked. And as he walked, he started to collect bits of wood and stick and put them in the bag on his back. 
Can you do that with me? And he carried on walking. And he walked. And he walked. And he walked. And he walked. And he carried on collecting the sticks and the pieces of wood. But eventually his mittens got in the way. He found it hard to pick the things up. So he took them off and he put them in his pocket. And he carried on. He walked. And walked. And walked. And walked. And he carried on picking them up and putting them in his bag. Now, eventually, the bag was full and the little boy turned for home, but he did not notice that one of his mittens had fallen out of his pocket onto the floor. A little mouse had spotted it and the little mouse came scurrying over, peered inside the mitten. Oh, it looks warm in there. And she squeezed inside. Oh, it was cosy. Oh, it was snug. Should we say that together? Oh, it was cosy. Oh, it was snug. And it was. Not long after that, along came a rabbit. Can you be the rabbit? Budoing, 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 budoing. The rabbit saw the mitten, peered inside. Is there any room for me? Oh, no, I don't think so, said the mouse. You'll be too bouncy. Oh, no, I promise I'll keep really still. All right, said the mouse, come on, squeeze in. So the rabbit squeezed inside the mitten. And this is what she said, Are you ready? Oh, it's cosy. Oh, it's snug. And it really was. Not long after that, along came a squirrel. Can you be the squirrel? With your big bushy tail. <sighs> Saw the mitten. Peered inside and said, any room for me? It looks cosy in there. Oh, no, no, no. Said everybody, you can't fit in here. You'll tickle our noses with your tail. No, I won't, said the squirrel. I promise. Look, I'll sit on it. You won't know it's there. Oh, very well. Come on, squeeze in. So the squirrel squeezed into the mitten. This is what he said. Oh, it's cosy. Oh, it's snug. And it really was. Not long after that, along came a fox. The fox peered inside the mitten and said, Any room for me? Oh, no, 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 to the animals, you'll eat us. No, I won't, said the fox. I'm far too cold. I just want to get warm. You won't know I'm here. All right, said the animals, in you come. So the fox squeezed inside the mitten. This is what he said. Oh, it's cosy. Oh, it's snug. And it really, really was. Not long after that, along came a deer. Can you make the deer? The deer's got long legs. Saw the mitten, bent down and called out, any room for me? Oh, no, 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 said everybody. Your, your antlers will get stuck in the wool. No, I'll, I'll be very, very careful. I promise you, you won't even know I'm there. So the deer squeezed inside the mitten. Goodness me, this is what he said. Oh, it's cosy. Oh, it's snug. And it was. Not long after that, along came a great big bear. Can you be the big bear? Saw the mitten, picked it up and said, any room for me in there? Oh, no, 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 said the animals, you're far too big. Oh, come on, I'll squeeze, you hardly know I'm there. All right, said the animals, in you come. So the bear squeezed inside the mitten. And this is what she said. Oh, it's cosy. Oh, it's snug. And it was. Not long after that, everybody, along came a little beetle. Can you be the little beetle? And the little beetle came to the mitten and called out, any room for me in there? Oh, no, 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 said everybody. We're absolutely full. There's no room for anybody else. Oh, go on, please. I'm only tiny. You'll never even know I'm there. All right, said everybody. In you come. So the little tiny beetle squeezed inside the mitten. This is what he said. Oh, it's cosy. Oh, it's snug. And it was, but uh-oh, that little beetle was one creature too many. The seams of the mitten started to stretch. Can you stretch? And pull. And eventually the whole side of the mitten just went and exploded into pieces all over the forest floor.
And all of the animals picked up a little bit of the mitten and they ran home with it to make it nice and warm. Well, the little boy had made his way home and he got home and he said, oh no, I've lost one of my mittens. Never mind, said Grandma. You never know. I might be able to mint you another pair. And the next day when he got up, there at the end of his bed was a brand new pair of mittens. The end. Give yourselves a clap. I do like that story. As I said, it's very silly. It doesn't make any sense, but it's just so much fun and I really, really enjoy it. Fantastic. Right then, Lammy, shall we find out what's in the bag now? Okay, let's see. What can you, there's some good stories in there. There are some good stories in there. Okay, let's see. Here we go. What's coming out now? Oh, now this is a story. It's an old traditional folk talk tale and it was told to me by Taffy Thomas who is the storytelling laureate who has a storytelling garden up in Grasmere in the Lake District and I went to an event with him and he he's actually one of the reasons I became a storyteller because I saw him and I thought oh I'd love to do that what an amazing job and he told this story to me so now I'm going to tell it to you. It's called The King of the Birds. Here we go. Let me keep tight hold of that owl don't be dropping her. You know how it begins. Long, 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 all together now, long ago, far away from here, up in the Lake District, there was an eagle, a golden eagle. And you know, that golden eagle was such a show off. Everywhere he went, he would say, I'm the best, I'm the best. Can you do that with me? I'm the best. I'm the best. Look at my beautiful wings, my golden feathers. What's he say? I'm the best. I'm the best. All the other birds got a little bit fed up about this. He's such a show off, they said. We need to do something about it. He's getting far too big for his boots. And so they decided they would go and speak to the wise owl. And they fluttered in, can you flutter in? They fluttered in from all around and they gathered around the owl's house. And the owl came out on her perch and said, what seems to be the problem? Well, the eagle is the problem. He's such a show off. Everywhere he goes, he tells people he's the best. He won't let anybody else get a word in. He's such a big for his boots. Hmm, said the owl, let me see what we can do about this. I've got an idea. Can you tell all the birds to gather round to, together tomorrow by the big old tree at the top of the hill? We're going to have a race. And so off the birds all went and they fluttered around, can you flutter around? And they told all the other birds in the area to come. And the very next day by the big tree on the top of the hill, all the birds gathered. There were little birds. Can you make little birds? There were middle-sized birds. And there were great big birds, including the golden eagle. What's going on? He said, there's going to be a race of the birds to find out who's best. Huh, no point doing that. I'm the best. I'm the best. Do that with me. I'm the best. I'm the best. <sighs> he was at it again. The owl swooped in to speak to the birds. Welcome, everybody, she said. Today we are going to have a special race to find out who is the king of the birds. Well, it will obviously be me, said the eagle. What's he say, everybody? I'm the best, I'm the best. I've got the best wings, show me your wings. I've got the shiniest feathers. What's he say? I'm the best, I'm the best. We'll see about that said the owl. Wow, the golden eagle was busy strutting around and showing everybody his fine feathers. The owl went to speak to little Jenny Wren, the smallest bird. She whispered in Jenny Wren's ear, I'll do exactly that. And so the race was ready to begin. The birds were all lined up and up onto the back of the eagle's neck climbed little Jenny Wren. He didn't notice her because he was so busy telling everybody, what's he saying? I'm the best, I'm the best. 
and so the race was ready to begin. This is what will happen, said the owl. You will fly up high, and whoever can stay up the highest for longest will be crowned the king of the birds. Are you ready? The animals all lined up. The birds were ready to get going. They fluffed up their feathers, ready to go. Are we ready to start the race, everybody? What do we say? Ready, steady, go. The birds all flew off into the air. Show me your wings. The little birds flew and flew and flew as high as they possibly could, but their wings got very tired and eventually they had to turn and come back down to sit with the owl. Up in the sky, the other birds were still flying. Let's do the middle-sized birds. The middle-sized birds were flapping their wings and keeping up and keeping up, but eventually their wings got tired as well and they had to fly back down to join the little birds and the owl. The race was still going on. By now, only the big birds were left. Let's see those big wings. They flew and flew and flew with their powerful wings and their feathers helping them. Up they went through the air currents. But eventually, even the big birds got tired and they fluttered down to join the small birds and the middle-sized birds and the owl. Now all that was left was the big golden eagle and little Jenny Wren hiding on his neck. I knew I'd win, said the golden eagle. I am the best. What's he say everybody? I'm the best. I'm the best. Are you ready? He flew and flew and flew and flew and he soared above the clouds looking down at everybody. I'm the best. I'm the best. And he turned to make his way back down to the earth. Little Jenny Wren was ready and as soon as the eagle turned back down towards the ground she shot off into the sky. Forget you ones ready? And she flew 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 up and up and up. The eagle didn't notice and he swooped down to join the small birds, the middle-sized birds, the big birds and the owl. I won! I won, said the eagle. I told you. What's he say, everybody? I'm the best. I'm the best. I told you I'm the best. I won. Oh, no, you didn't, said all the birds. Look. And when everybody looked up in the sky, there was little Jenny Wren. Can you show me your wings? She was flying and flying and flying. Eventually flew down to join the birds and the owl. Well done, Jenny Wren. You are the king of the birds. And you know, ever since that day, eagles have not been seen around the Lake District. I think it's probably because they're feeling a bit huffy. But if ever you see a little tiny wren, just remember they might be small, but they are the king of the birds. The end. Oh, give yourselves a clap and give your arms a bit of a rub. We got They got a bit of a workout in that story, didn't they? Fantastic. Well done. Right. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed our stories. I hope you particularly enjoyed our story about the goats. And let's hope our friends, the goats in Clindidno, are still having a lovely time around the town there. Keep your eyes peeled on the news in case there's any more news about them. Thank you so much for listening and joining in today. Over on Jude Lennon Facebook author page tomorrow we've got another book reading uh, featuring Lammy and the rest of the crew again tomorrow. So we'll see what that's about at 10 o'clock on Jude Lennon author page on Facebook. Thanks very much for watching this morning. It's been lovely to see you. Let's do our goodbye song. Are we ready Lammy? Goodbye everyone. Nice to see you. Goodbye everyone, nice to see you. Goodbye everyone, nice to see you. Nice to see you today. Yay! Well done everybody. Thanks very much for watching. Bye!